Let's talk about some special type of rook endings. Uh, we already mentioned about the basics that rook has to be active. We know that. We know also that <coughs> king has to be very active. It's better to play rook ending with a pawn down than with a passive rook. Passive rook, as a rule, is very bad. But well, there are some more in advanced rules. Here is, for example, position. In this position, it's white's move. <clears throat> white already has relatively active rook, and, but so is black. Black's rook is behind white's pawn. Now, how can white win? <clears throat> Obviously, the plan of winning should be... Uh, should have to do something with advancing king towards the white pawn, and uh, but since white pawn cannot uh, uh, make any progress without the help of king, and here is one very important move for white to make, <clears throat> and this move has nothing to do with the rules we already mentioned, which is activity of the rook and the king. It has to do something with the pawn structure. One very important move for white to play in this position is h5. Now, why is it so important? Let me explain it. Now, in order for white to move the king to the queen side to help white's pawn uh, to promote to queen, we have to make sure, for example, if we go directly there, we're going to lose some pawns on a <coughs> king side. h5 is a very strong move. Now, what alternatives does black have here? Black can push the pawn g5, take on h5, or not react at all. Taking on h5 is not good and g5 is not good and here is why. After g5 white wins easily by playing g4 which is very strong move. Why g4 is very strong move? If white could bring their queen to king to queen side without ever worrying about the king side pawns then they will win easily but after g5 they can do it because will they play g4 followed by uh, whatever black does rook to f5 and they put the pawn on f3 now you see that all white's king side pawns are safe forever. And now king can simply march to the queen side and white wins very easily. And the same that notice that black's king cannot go to queen side because black is going to lose all their king side pawns. So rook on f5 has an excellent position and white wins easily. So that's why, um, that's why in the position we have g5 is bad move. But if black takes, it's almost the same. White plays rook takes h5, and after king g6, white can play g4. And you see that same, white put the, put the rook on f5, king on g3, pawn on f3, and then white simply marches towards the uh, a pawn. So that's why those are not good. So that, that leaves black with only one opportunity, just not to react. But if black does not do anything, if black simply plays king f8, then white can make 
significant progress by going g4 and on king g7, king g3, and on king f8, f3, and they have very good winning chances because black cannot advance their kingside pawns. Now, after king f4, if black goes rook a3, king e4, and black has to stand and wait, and then at some point when white does go king e4, rook takes f3, king c6, king d5 and king c6, you see the black did get a pawn on the king's side, but they, can ne they could never advance their own pawns. Next white is going to play a6, king b6, and white wins easily. <coughs> now let's try for white not to play correct move. h5 is the only correct move, but suppose white played king f3 and black went h5. Now this position is very difficult to win. King e3, now black goes king f6, and if white goes f3, black goes rook check, and on king e4, black goes king e6. Now white has very difficult time to move the king towards the pawn, because on king d4 they may lose two pawns, f3 and g3, and then even if they win rook, black's rook for the a pawn, still going to be difficult to win. So that's another principle here. Try, before going to the queen side, try to protect your king side pawns with the rook. In other words, try to get favorable pawn structure. And h5 is the move that will do it. <coughs> now let's get to the other very interesting rook, posi rook ending position that has nothing to do with basic, basic uh, uh, rook ending principles. Well, this time we will, we will see how important it is in, wh when you are in rook ending, how important it is to know all the pawn endings. Well, here is this rook ending you cannot play correctly if you know, if you don't know your pawn endings very well. It's black's move. In this position, black must, absolutely must, play c6. And uh, with the hope of taking the pawn next move. Well, in this, but black played rook takes e6. And they were very much surprised that after exchange of rooks and white goes to king b5, black is totally lost. Why black is lost? Now white wants to go king c6. Black has three moves, king d7, king d6, and king d5. They are all losing. <coughs> now, after king d6, let me show you how white, black loses. White goes simply c4, forcing black to play king d7, and then c5. Now you see how black loses. White is threatening c takes b, and when black takes, White takes on c5 and wins easily. Then they come back king b5, win a pawn, and win a game. Now, let's see if black plays not king d6, king d5, or king d7. So you have to notice one thing. The way we won in a previous example on king d6, we won c4, king d7, c5. This is the key position. You have to get this position. If you go on king d5, you go c4, you don't get this position. The correct way to play on king d5 or king d7 is c3. Now, black 
must play king d6, you see, since they have no other move, they cannot advance because then they lose after king c6, king d3, king takes c7, king takes c3, king takes b6, and after king takes b3, king takes a5. And you see that black loses. So in the position that we have, White goes c3, and now when black goes king d6, then white plays c4. And now black must, we got to the same position we examined in a previous variation, and after king d7, c5, and you see you get pawn and game easily won. <clears throat> so in the position, the typical and critical and very bad mistake black made, black took a pawn. The correct move is c6. And black should draw this. Now, um, white has some try with c3 to try to go before, and then best way for black to play is rook e4 check, and after king d3, rook takes c6, which should be a draw. And a typical mistake, rook takes e6, leads to a completely lost position. There is one more end game I want to show you that has a tendency. All the rook endings, most of the rook endings, have tendency to turn into the uh, uh, pawn endings. So but that's why you should know what pawn endings are one and what are drawn. Here is the position. White to move. This is winning position for white. White can go rook b8 check. King h7. And now rook to f8. And you see that black must play rook a7. And now the winning move is e6. It's interesting to notice that e6 takes you directly to the pawn ending, to the basic pawn ending that we covered in the pawn ending chapters within opposition. <coughs> and here how it's going to work. Every move that will be made from now on is forced. White is threatening e7 and e8. Black obviously must take. And white goes rook e8. Rook e8, and all black has a few options here. Threat is rook to e7 check. What can black do? If black removes the rook from 7th horizontal, then f7 wins easily. And if black plays rook to f7, then king g5 wins easily. Because right now, black is in complete Zugzwang. Rook has to move, and then rook e7 check. So only other option black has here to avoid this check to play king h6. That's the only other option. But then we play rook h8 check. Black must go rook h7. White takes on h7. Black takes on h7, and white goes king g5. Now, if black goes king g8, black simply loses after king takes g6, king f8, f7. So black should try to go king h8. And now, we don't play king takes g6, because after king g8, this is a draw position. So the winning move here, after king h6, King h8, we go opposition, king h6. So this you have to know while you are still in a rook ending. Now king g8, king takes g6. And after king f8, we go f7. Actually, the interesting point I want to make after king h8, king takes g6 wins also. 
The way it may go from now is on king g8, we can go f7. Actually, it's not a draw, it's a win. King f8, king f6. Forced to play e5, and now obviously we are not going to play fe, that leads to a stalemate. And king takes e5 wins, and king takes f7, king f5. We have an opposition with a king in front of pawn, and position is easily won for white. So those are very interesting positions that you have to know in rook ending. But of course, first we have to know the basic rules. Rook must be active, king must be active. And then there come some subtleties like we just discussed. And this, should, if you know uh, those principles, and if you, whatever you learn from this, Sooner or later, you will definitely have it in your, um, in your tournament, in, in, in the games you play. You will be able to use it from one side or the other. So this will be very helpful for you to know. And that's how we're going to conclude this chapter. That's what we're going to conclude this chapter with. Frequently, end games been treated as the quiet part of the game. And even people, even very strong tactically players, they uh, treat end game like a quiet stage of the game. But the, not knowing and not realizing that even in the end game, one side or the other is and may be in a great danger from some tactical reasons. Okay, there is a position we have right now in front of us where it's a, with a total material equality. White has bishop and two pawns for the rook. There's a game between two grandmasters, two very well-known grandmasters. We don't need to mention their names. And... Uh, there is some significant thing here. Something is very significant that um, black in this position, white in this position, is, has very dangerous king position. So black played rook c6, which is very good move. <clears throat> and white pressed to win too hard. They think they have a pawn. That should give them a chance to win. And white made a move, bishop f8. Not realizing that this is the move that loses immediately. Now, um, well actually I, we should say that even if white did something else, they are in trouble already because rook can never move if rook moves anywhere, then white gets checkmated. So rook has to stay here. And king cannot go too far. So the bishop f8 move was kind of waiting move. And now black has very interesting tactical shot that it may be typical for the middle game position. But that's why you have to be very careful. Even in the end game position, it can be very crucial. So rook b5 check, forcing white to play king a4. And after rook b8, white should resign. You see black is attacking white's rook, white's bishop. And white's rook cannot take the rook because of the checkmate. So white loses a bishop. So and then... It's, of course, all over. This is an interesting tactical shot. 